Hold up. They used to say that I was underrated, so I'm under pressure, tell I'm undertaking. Used to star, stomach on deflated, now I'm eating good, never under catered. From a city where you. That shit was crazy. Oh, what's going on, guys? Your boy X here, and oh man, I just got home um, from watching Dragon Ball Super Broly. Um, man, I I had to turn the camera on to review this shit. Um, first off, before I even get into the review, I just automatically want to say this is so far because you know they're probably gonna do some more. Uh, but as of right now. Uh, this is probably my favorite Dragon Ball movie. Now I know uh, I'm probably uh, I'm probably uh, still uh, <laughs> still energized, still on the adrenaline from watching the movie. But I honestly think this is the best Dragon Ball movie for plenty of reasons. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Definitely though, before I begin, I'm definitely saying. Uh, this is gonna be spoiler filled. I was thinking about making two different um, review videos, but I was like, eh, F it. You know, the movie's out today. Uh, by the time, <laughs> let me just do spoilers all the way. Um, so, where do I even begin? Um, okay, well, there was one thing I disliked about this movie, uh, but pff, we're gonna get to it. But of everything else, movie. Just amazing, like the animation, the story, the story. Like I feel like, cause usually I think Dragon Ball Z has a problem, like with the movies. Like, um, you know, they have a limited time. They have a limited time to tell a story, and sometimes they might not get around with you know everything. But I feel like with this movie, we got just enough time with everything, and like. Even, I feel like even the stuff they didn't really fully explain, we got like a little bit enough to like, you know, kind of brainstorm is what I'm trying to say here. Because I'm almost 100% sure a lot of people leaving the theater is like, man, that was a good movie, but shit, how the hell was Broly keeping up with her? <laughs> and I have an idea, I'm going to get to it, I have an idea why I think uh, he was so strong, because they did explain a little bit. Um... But let me go to the beginning. Beginning, you know, that whole the past. The whole past, I felt that was great, you know. Uh, they, I'm so happy they finally gave this man Brawley. Uh, he gave him a reason, you know. Gave him a 100% reason why everything was happening, basically. And I actually like how they made Brawley. Like, he wasn't, you know... Uh, even in like the first movie though, I feel like Brawly, like when you look at Brawly, he just looked like, like they said, he was like looking weak, like he, he didn't look weak, but you know, he was like a kind saying, you know, and I like that, I like that, cause it was kind of like a little twist, like, nah, we're gonna make Brawly, he's not gonna be a killer, he's like really kind, but he's like forced to fight cause of that, uh, I really liked how they did that, um, and they gave him like, or oh, they gave Paragus, they gave him a reason why he wants, re you know, revenge on Vegeta, whatever. Um, love that. Um, the only thing about the past, then this is the only thing I hate in this whole movie. <laughs> Here he goes. Um, I, I hate that they kind of sped over Bardock's rebellion scene. And what, what do I mean by that? You know, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody's seen the Bardock special movie, whatever you want to call it. But, um, you know, I, I think that's like the most badass scene with Bart. Like, you know, when he goes up into the atmosphere, he starts talking that mad shit to Frieza, and then Frieza's like laughing at him, throws the supernova down. <laughs> Bardock tries to shoot a blast, and then he's, oh, you know, that's like Bardock's like, you know, bad, and then all the, you know, all the stuff prior, obviously, you know, his comrades die, headband, you know, shit like that. Here, you know, Bardock, I feel like, you know, it's a little bit more tame, like, kind of, like, and they kind of, you know, I think a lot of people was kind of scared they were going to make Bardock into, like, um, you know, not like a Saiyanist, but, like, kind of, like, um, nice guy, nice Saiyan or whatever. But they still kind of gave him that hardness, because, you know, even his wife, which we get, we got to meet Goku's mom for the first time, you know, she had mentioned, like, you know, usually Saiyan men don't care about this, so, like, you know, when they was, like, sending Goku off 
into you know go to earth and you know she's like usually they don't care about their children so what's up and then he's like you know i've you know i've been you know doing all these bad things this whole time i want to do something good for once so i was like okay you know i didn't like that but like i said going back to what i hated you know when frieza decided to destroy vegeta uh, <laughs> yeah planet vegeta um you know i if you did notice because you might have missed it you know when Frieza went into outer space and was ch about to charge that shit up there was like little black dots already in space or I guess you would say the atmosphere of Vegeta, a planet Vegeta um, and I'm guessing you know those was you know Bardock and like I guess the rest of the Saiyans that joined Bardock to fight Frieza but they kind of skipped over all of that like you know we got Goku going in outer space and all of a sudden Frieza there uh, Bardock's there in space I guess and you know Frieza throws it down and then Bardock shoots the blast and then ah! <laughs> so I mean I hated they skipped uh, that majority part well, you know y'all know what I mean but um other than that, pass was done great. We even got to see um, Kid Radis and Kid Vegeta, who they didn't give no fucks that everybody died. I was like, whoa! <laughs> Radis was like, yeah, and mom and dad are dead. Yeah, I had a brother too. Yeah, Vegeta's like, oh, oh, Planet Vegeta. Oh my dad. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Nappa and them were more. And we get to see Nappa. It was cool. You know, he had the little hair and everything. I guess the stress from uh, having to take care of Ras and Vegeta must. <laughs> that must be the reason he went bald. Shit. I, whew, savage kids. But um, that was all well done. Um, now for the majority rush, you know, it's like really like, hey, let's get the ball. The re I feel like okay, that was funny and stupid at the same time. The reason why Frieza wanted the Dragon Balls. Uh, <laughs> to get five inches of get five inches taller, I guess. I mean, that was dumb, but it was funny. Um, it was a lot of comedy. I feel like in this movie, you know, uh, that's what that's what I feel like. Also, made it like a great movie. Like it was like a good blend of action and comedy. Um, but highlights, highlights from this movie. Well, I can go to everybody. Vegeta. I definitely love that. Uh, you know, Vegeta got the fight first. You know, <laughs> usually Goku be, <laughs> you know, he be the first person. But they actually let Vegeta fight first. So I love that. Um, when Vegeta turned Super Saiyan, God, that was so. I don't know what the word badass like. It just was, it felt godly when he turned to it. And even when he was transforming into it at first, or when he turned, I think when he turned Super Saiyan, um, I don't know if this was like an artistic choice or they were trying to hint at something later on, but you know, his hair turned green for a second, then he turned Super Saiyan. And I'm gonna get back to that because they did the same thing with Goku, but in another way. But I, I don't know if they were like hinting at something with that, but you know, I was like, what the hell? Okay, so you know, he turned Super Saiyan, and when he turned Super Saiyan, God, for some reason, it was just badass, like how he was fighting when he was God. He was just like, just <laughs> Just dodging the shits, and then he just like whooping Broly's ass. Like, I love how they they kind of cause like watching the trailers, you was like, man, Broly's about to whoop their ass. But no, at the beginning when they start fighting, Vegeta's whooping Broly's ass like hard, and then Broly finally starts, you know, learning while he fights and getting stronger and blah da 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 da. But I yeah, I think with Vegeta, those was his shining moments, like when he was whooping Broly's. I'm glad they gave him that, cause you know usually they <laughs> they hate to give Vegeta moments. I feel like, but yes, I'm glad Vegeta was like Vegeta. I think fought. I oh no, actually no, they might have fought equally. I'd say they fought, but I'd say Vegeta did get the work in on Broly before you know he started getting a little power boost and everything. Um, going to Goku next. Going to Goku, like I said, uh, when he transformed into Super Saiyan Blue, artistically, I don't know, but it was like a little... <laughs> and everybody in my theater thought he was going to turn Ultra Instinct, but that boy turned Super Saiyan Blue. Everybody was like, oh! <laughs> I'm telling you, when you saw the white hair, I was like, woo! <laughs> that shit was clean, though. Um, that was a nice little gotcha moment, but... Yeah, uh, I, I, for me personally, I love Super Saiyan God more than Super Saiyan Blue. So, and, you know, when Goku turned to him, he had that little technique where he could, like, freeze Brawly, I guess, in place. Like, it was like on some telekinesis shit. <laughs> You're a good guy. <laughs> you know, Goku. Um, but, oh, yeah, that's another thing. Vegeta was ruthless. Like, Vegeta was about that. Like, Vegeta was going to kill Brawly. Like, he was about to end his shit. Uh, but... 
But yeah, Brawler got the little power boost and everything, and then, you know, Goku fighting him. Like, <sighs> Goku turns to... Matter of fact, no, no, well, no, no, they didn't. But, yeah, <sighs> Goku turns Super Saiyan Blue, and then Brawler was just whooping their ass for the longest, and he was just, like, in his, um humanoid ape form that's what i'm gonna call it but uh <laughs> yeah like god damn let me just go to brawly real quick brawly um oh my god like first of all his personality like i said earlier i love what they did with him he's not just even though like i always say in the first movie he wasn't just one word he was actually talking but yeah they gave him personality they gave him like you know he's very um he was a sympathetic character and I wouldn't even say he was a villain he was more like a ah, shit anti-villain <laughs> but I mean like you know he was only fighting because of his dad wanted revenge on Vegeta um on top of that you know his little backstory with what his fur was actually because everybody I feel like back when before the movie came out everybody was like oh man you know that's ancient ancient singing armor but yeah in the movie we find out it was from his little friend and see his ear so that was nice you know and then that kind of added more to brawl this kid like oh okay man he's a good guy why oh man this is gonna suck when he dies oh <laughs> uh, but yeah and then and I forgot her name, I'm sorry. The girl, the, the girl that was helping Brawly, uh, well, you know, the be friend about. Man, I mean, when I was sitting with my friends, I was saying the whole movie, I'm like, man, this girl wants some Brawly dick. I ain't lying. <laughs> I was like, this girl really wants some Brawly dick. Like, that's how much she was trying to help Brawly, I'm telling you. But, uh, Brawly, man, this man, and, the, and, and oh, here we go. I'll say this real quick before I even continue. The, I'm gonna tell y'all the reason why I think this man was able to be on par with the gods. <laughs> on par with Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue. Now, we were told by uh, Paragus that uh, Brawly tapped into a power where he was able to um, have the ape's strength but stay in humanoid form. So, when he was in this form, but the drawback is, you know, it's kind of like you you go berserk, basically. So, you know, um, I was like, okay, well, that's a good explanation. Uh, but damn, the, the, the ape is that strong to a god? You know, but also to, you know, his power, it seemed like it was increasing. And even back when he was a kid, baby, you know, he had a, a, a what is it, an abnormal power. They mentioned this. So, okay, I'm like, okay, so the ape power on top of his um, wild power power changing fluctuation okay i guess but then when he turns super saiyan what i think happened is not only because he turned super saiyan when he was still in that ape like form so i'm thinking what happened was he transformed into super saiyan so it was kind of like a mix between super saiyan and his uh ape uh, transformation so that kind of blended that's why I think he was so powerful toward the end of the movie and also too that's interesting because that actually and like a lot of people have mentioned that's kind of like how Super Saiyan 4 is and I do like to mention that during the movie they did have a scene uh, stating that Paragus had to cut his tail off so I'm wondering if, if Raleigh had his tail would he had even like had like a new transformation and, 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 that's, that's what I'm thinking but anyway <laughs> that could be a way they could do Super Saiyan 4 if they want to make it canon but um yeah Brawley man this man was Devastating. He was whooping Goku ass. To he was doing the whole Loki on his ass, like whooping his ass. And then they had the tag team was still getting their ass whooped. Uh, shout out to Piccolo for making a cameo appearance. Man, they gotta, I don't know. I feel like they gotta like power boost some of these characters, man. Like Piccolo, I would love him to be on the battlefield, but he's so weak. And he even mentioned, I might get in the way. Oh, I better stay here. <laughs> um, and, like I said, I mean, from the Tournament of Power, we know that Nameki, like, uh, I, cause I was thinking a long time ago, well, I mean, actually, you know, they call me also, but, you know, the Namekians, they get power when they fuse with other Namekians, so I'm like, damn, well, hold, man, can Piccolo just fuse with some more Namekians, please? Can we get them on the battlefield? Like, I just want Piccolo to get stronger, but, 
Piccolo was only there for to learn the, the fusion dance, which let me bring that up to that shit was funny as hell. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm so happy that they uh, included fat Gogeta and skinny Gogeta, like, you know, because they was both in the Janemba movie and it would make sense because it's their first time trying to do the dance, or at least Vegeta. I think Goku, you know, he knew it, but Vegeta. And like, leading up to it, Vegeta was just, <laughs> he was like, oh, do we really have to do this embarrassing dance? I'd rather the earth be destroyed and Goku's all like you mean you would you would let your newborn baby and Boma be killed It's like oh don't guilt trip it. that shit was hilarious like Vegeta man this home Vegeta was comedy here but god damn it um seeing Gogeta in action was amazing then when he finally did it's like ah oh, you know when we use the Patara we're called Vegito uh, what can we call him um, Goviga, no, no, Gogeta. <laughs> Let's get it. Like, man, Gogeta whooping Brawly ass, man. Like, see that? And I was surprised that we got that whole fight, Gogeta. Uh, because, you know, when with Vegito back in the Goku Black art, you know, oh, the time, the time, it, it, we got, it got cut short because we're Super Saiyan Blue. And I'm like, well, Gogeta Super Saiyan Blue, but he didn't defuse. So I was actually surprised by that. Um, on top of that, too, uh, my friend, shout out to uh, Christopher's couch. Some of y'all might know him. Uh, he actually said something that was interesting that they they should have did i think um like towards the end you know when you thought go brawler was about to be goodbye uh before they made the wish you know gogeta was charging up the kamehameha to end brawler's life and he was like man it would have been cool like um like right when the girl made the wish for brawler to escape if like Goku, like Gogeta defused back into Goku and Vegeta and so like the Kamehameha dispersed. So it was like, well, she didn't make that wish. Man, what would have happened? <laughs> like, would Brawly have whooped the shit up? Like, you know, giving you like a, Aah. so that, I mean, that would have been cool. But yeah, you know, Brawly got away, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, what I do want to mention, man, I'm telling y'all like, of the OG villains of Z, I still say Cell is my favorite, but god damn it, Frieza is that Like, Frieza is just, oh my god, comedy gold. Like, even serious moments he makes funny as hell. Like, the funniest scene in this entire movie was when Frieza killed Paragus. Like, the whole theater was cracking up. Like as soon as as soon as Frieza was having flashbacks about when he had killed Krillin and Goku touched him, I was like, oh no. <laughs> and then it was so funny because Paris was like, uh, Frieza was like, um, oh, so you think this is like Brawly's maximum strength? Paris, I believe so. And then Frieza's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and then oh man, Frieza, oh no, Brawly, a straight key. Last killed your father! <laughs> Man, Frieza! Oh my god, that was comedy gold. Um and also to Brawly whooping Frieza's ass rightfully so after that but man that was oh god Frieza was getting his ass whooped for an hour I mean might have been a little bit over now but for sure an hour plus like god damn that reminded me of when Topo was whooping Frieza's ass or jeering but shit Brawly that had to have been the worst ass whooping Frieza was getting Brawly was like bloop, 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 bloop. Frieza just getting his ass whooped, turned gold, still getting his ass whooped. Um, and he makes gold looks like he's a <laughs> feast your eyes on Golden Frieza, the last thing you'll ever see. Nigga, please, no. <laughs> and I do like that they uh, mentioned in the movie. It was like, you know, towards the beginning, you know, they were talking about how they let Frieza go and everything. And I like how they mentioned. Uh, like, oh, you know, Frieza last time, you know, he went off train and came back Golden Frieza. What if he does that again? Like, they were hinting at him getting another transformation. And I would love that, because, like, as of right now, honestly, Frieza is severely depowered compared to, like, this was the first time Frieza saw Fusion, you know, because Frieza, what the hell are you? Like, <laughs> and he's just like, oh, you've been dead for a while. This is Fusion. Like, okay, so now Frieza knows about Fusion. Uh, uh, Brawly is stronger than Freeze, obviously. 
And it's like, Freezer's just really deep power now compared to them. So I definitely, I feel like if the anime comes back, which most likely 100% it will, uh, Freezer's definitely getting a new form. If he doesn't, I'll be highly surprised. But for sure, I feel like he's getting a new form uh, just from that. Um, it was something else about, let's see, this is something else about Brawly I wanted to mention. Um... What was it? Ah, uh, guys, on the tip of my head. Uh, but definitely, uh, I will say um, the ending uh, with Goku when he said, I feel like that was one of the most badass lines. Um, Goku has probably said in a while, and I'll tell you why. You know, bro, you know, that he's leaving, they're like, what's your name? And then he's like, my name's Goku, but Brawly, you can call me Kakarot. And I was like, oh! <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, first of all, this has got to be the, what well, this is, this is the first time Goku has ever told somebody to call him Kakarot. You know, like, even like the other time, Raditz come to Earth, your name's Kakarot, my name's Goku, bitch! <laughs> So, you know, he, he everybody calls him Goku, but this is the first time he has ever told somebody to call him by his Saiyan name. Call me Kakarot. And also, too, that's a tie-in back to the old movies, you know, Brawly always raging and shit. Kakarot! So I was like, ooh, that's clean. That, that's actually a cool... So now if we see Brawly again, which we uh, will, uh, you know, he'll be like, Kakarot! You know, maybe they'll fight again or whatever. Uh, hopefully he gets some new ass clothes because his clothes total fuck up. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. It was like, like so much shit. You know, we got a little bit. We got the see screen time from Golden and Trunks and um, uh, I guess, you know, but everybody else, I don't know where the hell they were. Uh, oh, it was funny as hell because God damn it, Antarctica had to have changed climates about like five to six times. It went from Antarctica to rubble to a volcano <laughs> to space time continuum to fucking... <laughs> We were like, what the hell is going on? And yeah, speaking of that, when they were fighting Gogeta and Brawly, they broke through space-time content. We were like, what? Like, they was like, where are we? We was like, what the hell? And I was like, whoa. And oh, that was another thing my friend mentioned. Um, it would have been cool, like, when they had broke through the space-time continuum if, um... Like when they were in there, like maybe in the background, we would have saw like maybe future events. Kind of like think about like the Flash when he goes into the Speed Force, at least on the TV show. You know, he like when he's running, he's running past like maybe past events or future events that's gonna happen. It would have been cool like when they did like when they were fighting in the sp space time or whatever the fuck happened. It would have been cool if like we saw like future scenes like like little maybe like Easter eggs of what's to come in the background. So that was actually a cool idea, but you know. It was cool. Uh, they didn't explain that, but I mean, damn, more feats for us, right? <laughs> Dragon Ball community. <laughs> and another feat, actually, does, what was that? Goku and Brawly, they just dived in the fucking lava. And I was like, whoa! It was no horror around them at all, either. Because I remember in the second Brawly movie, uh, you know, when he fell in the lava, he, he has a little aura on him when he came out. I mean, when he went in, he didn't have no aura on either. But, like, in this movie, Goku and Brawly just dived in the motherfucking lava. I was like, oh, shit! <laughs> they fighting in lava! Uh, but, yeah, that shit was crazy. It was a lot of feasts. I don't know. It was a lot of stuff going on. But, definitely, Gogeta definitely was playing with Brawly that whole time they were fighting. Um... I'd argue, I don't even think he even needed to go blue, but, you know, I think he was trying to end that shit quick. He was, <laughs> and I do like they gave bro, they gave Gogeta his signature soul punishing move, although they don't explain I wish they did, because I'm still confused, like, what the hell, like, how does he create that? Like, what, like, what, what's forming that? Like, what the hell is soul punishing? Uh, but it's just a technique, whatever, I guess. Uh, <laughs> besides that, um, I do like, I did like the little side characters we had, the green girl, like I said, she wanted Brawly's dick the whole movie, uh, <laughs> uh, the guy, he was ride or die, I can respect that, uh, I even like, what was her name, Blue Raspberry or whatever, sassy, sassy freezer right hand woman, <laughs> 
she just t she just tells Frieza how it is. Frieza didn't even do anything to. Her. I'm like, whoa, okay, <laughs> I guess Frieza. Whoa, but yeah, so cool that she's still there. Uh, Cause I was expecting Frieza to kill some of his henchmen, but he didn't. I'm surprised. This gotta be the first movie and then happen. Um, besides that, oh. I almost missed it. Oh, thank God. Yeah, that's what I wanted to remember when I was thinking about with Brawly. Um, they teased us, guys. They teased us when uh, Brawly was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Weez for a second. I was like, everybody in the theater was like, oh, oh. Like, we was really about to see, but, you know, Weez was just dodging the whole time. My, my. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. But no, no, that was cut short. Gogeta came in there. I was mad. Ah. They got us again. Uh, <laughs> that was some tease right there. Ultra Instinct and fighting Weez. I was like, ah. And then even two toward the end, when Goku was talking to Brawly and the other two, he was like, oh, yeah, Brawly, man, we can train. Man, you might be stronger than Beerus. Man, see if this man's stronger than Beerus. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Gogeta, Super Saiyan Blue, might whoop Beerus' ass, to be honest. And, like, seeing all that shit he was doing. Um... But I don't know. I feel like Beerus is still stronger than Brawly, but I don't know. Brawly was. I'm like I said, man. If Brawly trains and gets like another transformation, you never know. And I, I mean, I, has Beerus ever since Beerus has met Goku, has Beerus trained anymore? Like, has Whis and Beerus been training, or have they just been eating this whole time? <laughs> That's another thing too. I wish Beerus had went with them. To Antarctica, at least to see what was happening. You know, I he was sensing it, but he didn't see it, you know, firsthand. They got this man babysitting. That shit was funny, though. But goddamn, I want to see Beers. And I, it would have been kind of cool if that, instead of Whis, it was Beers. But, you know, because we know Whis is stronger than Beers. But goddamn it, you know, it still would have been cool to see Beers uh, at least dodging some brawly shit for us, right? You know, but other than that, guys, like I said, this is definitely. My probably my favorite Dragon Ball movie. I'm sorry, like before this, oh, before this it was between Fusion Reborn and the first Brawly movie, ironically, right? But uh, yeah, this one it's just cause the animation, the fight choreography, the story was actually like well done, and I felt like for the first time, uh, the, for the movie, like. It, it didn't like it because usually I feel like when they're like uh, <laughs> when they're fighting the final person or whatever in the, in the movies the, the fight kind of ends right you know kind of like they, they fight a little bit but it kind of ends like real fast to me but in this movie I feel like Brawly got enough screen time you know like he was fighting like for the longest right he fought Vegeta he fought Goku he fought Frieza he fought Whis for like five seconds he fought Gogeta like he was getting from screen time he choked the man out like I'm really I, I can't be mad at the screen time Brawly got in this movie um it was damn near perfect damn near perfect like I said they could have mentioned a little bit more how Brawly was getting this damn powerful how he's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these Super Saiyan gods Super Saiyan blues um and I would have loved to have seen Bardock have his little shining speech. At least they could have gave Bardock his speech before he got obliterated. But, yeah, you know, that was a nitpick. But, yeah, like I said, this is damn near, yeah, the best Dragon Ball. If you if you have not seen this movie yet and you watched this, damn, I mean, you spoiled yourself. But, I mean, it's one thing to hear it than to see it. I feel like that sometimes, too. I might want to spoil myself for a movie. I'm like, eh. But then, you know, you watch it and you, you still can watch it. But yeah, this movie, goddamn. Uh, keeping away from spoilers for me myself, like seeing all this stuff, I was astonished. I was like, oh my god. Like, it was just fan service everywhere. Brawly fan service, Gogeta fan service, uh, Vegeta fan service, you know, because they like the shit off Vegeta. Um, it was just overall just great. Overall just great. I, I, that was the only complaint I had to Bardock moment, but. Like I said, I can let that slide. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I can't wait for what they have in the future with Brawly especially. Uh, I'm hoping they use Fusion again. Uh, not the Patara, but the dance. Um, get to see Gogeta again. I, if the anime comes back, 
and I was driving home thinking about this, like if I would want to see this like in anime form or would I just like them to skip this and go straight into like after the movie. Um, matter of fact, comment section down below, would you want this to be, fle I I'd say fleshed out more in the anime. No, because when I'm thinking about this, I feel like, because I feel, honestly, I feel like they did, like, perfectly. Like, everything is perfect. I think the only thing they could flesh out more is, like, the past. Like, uh, a little bit more with that. Um, but besides that, guys, that's all. Let me know in the comment section. If you've seen this movie, let me know y'all favorite part, favorite scene was. Um, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I'm doing that whole anime thing. Not just Dragon Ball Super, but that's my staple. That's how I started this channel on Dragon Ball. So if y'all new here, y'all seeing me for the first time, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. I'm trying to get to that 50,000 2019. So smash that subscribe button. Hit the bell to get notified when I drop my videos, guys. Um, like the video if you like the video. And like I said, comment down below, would you like to see this anim in anime form, make it fleshed out more, and let me know what y'all favorite scene from the movie was. And as always, guys, it's been your boy X, and I'm out. Deuces.